We're going to take a look at all of the quarterfinal matchups across the state of South Dakota. And I'm going to give you my picks, whatever that's worth. Let's look at 9B, Scotland at Kadoka. Scotland has won four games in a row, including a 40-14 beatdown last week against Irene Wakanda, where they had three returns for touchdowns. Kadoka has had a terrific season and under senior quarterback T.J. Hamer. With the senior power of Hamer and Gavin Sudbeck, he's got he a will lot of room win. But I think it'll be within a couple of scores. Del Rapids St. Mary at Faith. The Cardinals make their long-anticipated return to the field. They haven't played since October 2nd and haven't played a full game in even longer than that. But they also haven't lost since their 1-2 and two start. The Cardinals will have a five-and-a-half-hour trip, and Faith is no pushover. They found a way to beat perennial favorites Harding County, but despite that bus lag, I think DRSM finds a way to win and to get to the semifinals. A rematch of last year's 9B championship won't look much like the 2019 version. Harriet Selby has refueled nicely with the dynamite backfield of Trey Saylor and Brendan Begeman, while Coleman Egan is starting to find their stride with Brian Volker and Riker Hawkins. I like the Wolverines to get revenge on their home field in a hard fought battle. Corsica Stickney has put together a nice season, but after their forfeit win last week, it looks like this may be their last game of the year. They play a team who's been improving all season long and now adds one of the biggest playmakers, Eric Klanschnik, who comes back from an injury. He'll come back into the fold for Wolsey Wessington. The Warbirds will fly into the semis. In 9A, Castlewood comes in confident with convincing wins over Great Plains, Lutheran, Oldham, Ramona, Rutland, and Gregory over the last three weeks. But they have a rematch with Howard. They played back in the opener and the Tigers handled their business 53-0. Howard has looked very good since then. I think Howard wins, but it'll be closer than that opening game of the year. The 4-5 matchup features Phillip at Canastota Freeman. Phillip's high-powered run game behind Reed's Hetzel will be tested against a stout Canastota Freeman defense that gave up multiple scores for the first time since September 11th last week against Chester area. Give me the pride to roll in this one. Lyman travels to Wall for a big test. Wall's Bridger Amiat ran for 229 yards last week and a big win for the Eagles. They should keep it rolling one more week against Colton Collins and the tough Lyman Raiders. Ipswich Edmonds Central is coming off of a 52-0 shutout over Britain Hecla. Luke Peterson and the Tigers' run game has been very good, but they will be tested in Warner. The undefeated Monarchs have recorded two straight shutouts. This could be one of the best games of the quarterfinals. Last time they faced off, Warner eked it out by a single point. This time, I'm taking Ipswich to pull off the upset. Moving to 9AA, four unbeaten teams host games in the quarters. Let's we'll start with Viberg Hurley. They have the longest winning streak in the class. They'll host Rapid City Christian. Both teams are powered by the pass, but look for VH to grind it out on the ground. Hansen hit a roadblock late in the season with some tough competition. That will help as they line up against Platt Geddes. The Black Panthers are big up front and have several offensive weapons, including Jackson Newman. Grayson Hansen and Kelby Vanderwerf, I think Platt will find a way to get it done with those playmakers. Hamlin has a rematch against Arlington Lake Preston. If the Chargers keep their recent success on the ground, there will be no stopping them. Hamlin beat ALP three weeks ago, 36-6. I expect a very similar score this time around. Florence Henry outlasted Duel in the first round to advance. Lemon McIntosh's quarterback Cody Thompson threw for 391 yards and six touchdowns while rushing for 100 yards and two more in their big win over Elkton Lake Benton in the first round of the playoffs. I like the Cowboys to keep on wrangling in the wins with another one this week. In 11B, no one has messed with winner yet this year. McCook Central Montrose will do their best to find a way to change that. Jacoby Krause has nearly 2,000 yards rushing this season, but he goes up against one of the best run defenses in the state. Look for winner to dominate the time of possession 
and find a way to win. The 4-5 matchup is a rematch of a midseason game between Elk Point Jefferson and Sioux Valley. The Cossacks ended up pulling away for the win in that one. EPJ and Riley Schmitz have continued to improve. This one should be close, but in the end, Jackson Schiller and Parker Pitts will get the W for Sioux Valley. Bridgewater Emery Ethan faces Woonsocket Wessington Spring Sanborn Central in the battle of the longest co-op spellings in the state. The Seahawks have refueled nicely this year with Kobe Kaiser and Bodie Burnham churning out yards all season. They're going to be too much for the young but up-and-coming Blackhawks. St. Thomas Moore at Mobridge Pollock. This one could be the game of the week. It's going to be the toughest test for each team in a long time. St. Thomas Moore is hitting their stride with the Larsons running the football along with Ryan Wojcik, while Mobridge Pollock has been throwing it as well as anyone in the state with Caden Eisenman at quarterback. I think if the weather's nice enough to throw, which it should be, the Tigers will take home victory. Crazy Class 11A. We'll start with the number one team, T Area. They play against Lennox and they have a natural rivalry, but T should be too good, especially running the football, to lose this one. Give me T Area. Madison goes to Dakota Valley for the second time this year. They met in the opener, and DV won a close one. They made some big plays against the Bulldogs. I think they'll make more big plays again in this one and find a way to advance to the semis. Millbank will try to crash the semifinal party as they travel to Canton. They have two strong juniors with Caden Krause at quarterback and Marshall Volts at running back. They're going to need to find a way to chip away at that strong Seahawk defense Canton has won six in a row, mostly with their defense. I think Milbank can hang in this one. That Canton D will find a way to close it out. Dell Rapids at West Central is the best matchup in the class. Just two weeks ago, West Central cruised to a 34-0 win. Since then, West Central has lost, and Dell Rapids may have played their best game. Last week against T, when they went to overtime, they played very well. I think this one is much closer, but West Central will hang on for the win. For their second straight year, they're going to end the Quarrier season. In 11 AA, Brookings should take care of business against Spearfish. Yankton will have a little tougher time with Douglas, but should regroup and get a win. And I believe Pierre has too much firepower for Mitchell. The one game that should be close Huron at Sturgis. They played a really close one earlier in the year that Sturgis won. Huron's Cade McNeil and Max Kranzler give them a red zone passing threat, while Jaden Beck and Tyson Lean have been a dynamic duo in the backfield. Sturgis's defense has been their strength, but Caden Phillips, Ren Jacobs, and Owen Cass are making their offense a big threat too. I like Sturgis to pull this one out at home. Last but not least, 11 AAA. Roosevelt is back on track. They cruised to a season finale win last week against Washington. This week they face Watertown, a team that can be pesky. Even though the Arrows have lost four in a row, they have the ability to make big plays with Dawson Schmidt. But the Riders are too good in too many areas. Give me Roosevelt. O'Gorman hosts Harrisburg for the second year in a row in the quarterfinal round. They're very familiar with Harrisburg. Just last week, they went to overtime against the Tigers. I'm on the call for this one, so I'm not rooting one way or the other, but I do think Harrisburg will finally put together a performance to break into the semifinal round. Brandon Valley has been playing as well as anyone in the state. A lot of that credit goes to Joe Kolbeck and Tate Johnson running the offense, but their D has been just as nasty. They bring Aberdeen into town, should be able to handle Carter Hogue and company to punch their ticket to the semis. Then Friday, Lincoln faces Washington for the third time this year. In their first matchup, Lincoln stung early and often and dominated throughout the game. Their most recent matchup two weeks ago was closer. After Lincoln got out to a great start, Washington crept back into the game and made it close, but the Patriots still controlled the game. 
This time, I think Tommy Thompson and the Pats exact revenge for last year's quarterfinal loss and earn a trip to the semis.